So disagreement done right is evolution because disagreement is one of the main ways in which you can bring our contribution to the team. Yes, many times our perspectives are similar enough that bringing them together doesn't require actual contradiction, it's more like a collaborative dance of adding it to the total, but sometimes the differences are important enough that we need to contradict and confront. Disagreement done wrong, on the other hand, is an ugly mess of people that just want to be right, it gets personal, it gets messy, it saps energy and enthusiasm. After disagreement done right, the team gains something. After disagreement done wrong, the team loses something. So how to do it right? First, there's a question you need to ask yourself. Do you want to be right or do you want to get something done? It's an honest question. Many people just want to be right. So they jump on any statement that is incorrect or inaccurate, not because it's important or relevant to the matter at hand, but because they want to be right. This is selfish. Even if the intention is not selfish, the net result is because time and energy and motivation is wasted, debated things that just don't matter. People say incorrect or inaccurate things all the time, but you don't need to stress about all of that unless it's relevant to the matter of hand. You don't need to jump on it. You can just let it go. This kind of restraint and patience is going to get your social capital and is going to build a reputation as someone that is mature and confident enough that you don't feel the need to win every argument and jump on anything you disagree with. In turn, this capital and reputation is going to allow you to disagree more forcefully and more effectively when you actually need to. Second point, when you do need to disagree and contradict, do it fully, do it forcefully, respectfully, but directly and with no hesitation. Don't half-ass it, don't beat around the bush, don't try to say things without saying them. Just go for it and in a professional and polite manner, be very direct and very clear. The third point is to focus on the outcome. Your goal is not to prove the other guy wrong or to prove that you are right or to prove that some abstract idea is better than another abstract idea. Your goal is to get something specific done, usually to get to a specific actionable decision. This kind of approach will keep it from becoming personal and it will help you avoid distractions in the conversation. A major problem in this kind of contradicting conversation is that we get emotional and we react to everything the other guy is saying because we feel like we must fight them on all the fronts and we lose track of the objective and we end up debating 15 different points that we never intended to debate when we got into the conversation. Keep your eye on the ball. It doesn't matter what the other guy is saying. If it's not about the key issue, ignore it. You don't have to respond to it. Bring it back to the key issue and keep your eye on the target. A great example from the movies on how to contradict well is Michael Corleone's It's Not Personal, It's Business speech from The Godfather. Michael is the outsider in this situation because he is the one family member that hasn't been involved and has no experience in the mafia business. Uh, maybe we shouldn't get Mike uh, mixed up in this too directly. The other members of the family argue heatedly about what to do in the difficult situation in which they are. Sonny, we ought to hear what they had to say. No, no. No, no more. Not this time, Consigliere. No more meetings, no more discussions, no more Salazzo tricks. You give him one message, I want Salazzo. Oh, if not, it's all out war, we go to the Some matches. of the other families won't sit still. They never hand war. me Salazzo. Your father would want to hear this. This is business, not personal. They shot my father as business. Even the shooting ass. of your father was business, not personal, Sonny. Now, nobody has ever gunned down a New York police captain, never. It would be disastrous. All the five families would come after you, Sonny. The Corleone family would be outcast. Even the old man's political protection would run for cover. And this is when Michael intervenes and proposes a new and radical approach. Clemenza can figure a way to have a weapon planted there for me. Then I'll kill them both. As he does that, everyone disagrees with him and they very energetically attack him and even dismiss his points altogether, attack him personally, saying he doesn't know what he's talking about, he doesn't understand how this thing works, he has no experience, he's got no business having an opinion about it. <laughs> hey, what are you gonna do? 
Nice college boy, huh? Didn't want to get mixed up in the family business. Huh? Now you want to gun down a police captain, why? Because he slapped you in the face a little bit? Huh? What do you think, this is the army where you shoot him a mile away? You got to get up close like this, and bada bing, you blow their brains all over your nice Ivy League suit. Come here. Mwah! You're taking us very person. Michael stays cool, he doesn't just react to what the other guys are saying, he doesn't get into a debating game, he doesn't take the bait, he keeps his eyes on the target. He ignores the personal attacks, he ignores the irrelevant points and he keeps pushing for the key decision calmly, patiently, forcefully. Where does it say that you can't kill a cop? Come on, Mikey. Tom, wait a minute. I'm talking about a cop that's mixed up in drugs. I'm talking about a, a, a dishonest cop. A crooked cop who got mixed up in the rackets and got what was coming to him. That's a terrific story. And we have newspaper people on the payroll, don't we, Tom? They might like a story like that. They might. They just might. It's not personal, Sonny. It's strictly business. The fourth point to remember is to keep to the right level of specificity. The bane of bad contradicting is overgeneralization. Someone proposes a specific shortcut about a specific solution in a specific project and soon enough the conversation is about who believes in quality and who not. Someone says something about a particular employee and soon enough the conversation is about how do we treat our people. This kind of extreme generalization where everything quickly ends up being about core values and principles looks good in the movies but it's a bit silly on a day-to-day -day level. Keep your points and your focus specific enough and even if the other guy generalizes, you ignore their broad statements and you get back to the specific thing you want to achieve in this conversation. Avoid useless philosophical discussions, they have their time and place, but definitely not every day while you're trying to get something done. And the fifth point is, yes, of course, mind your language and all that. Everyone's heard about assertive communication and how to be clear and firm and direct without being aggressive and getting personal. So I won't spend too much on that, I've addressed it in other videos and I wanted to cover more some of the other points today. To recap, one, decide if you just want to be right or if you want to get something done. And if you want to get something done, then show the confidence and maturity to not contradict everything and anyone for no particular point and keep your eye on the specific objective, on the end goal. Two. When you do need to contradict someone, do it clearly and confidently, no hesitations, no beating around the bush. 3. Focus on the outcome, ignore any distraction, any relevant point that might be brought up in the conversation, even if it's a personal attack, try to ignore it, move past it, focus on the key decision. Fourth, Stick to the right level of specificity, don't overgeneralize and don't take the bait when others overgeneralize. Fifth, keep it civil and personal, communicate in an assertive way. That's it.